And so God says, listen, as long as you're proud like Uzziah the king was, I can't even bless you anymore. Pride stinks. Uh, so we have to, we, therefore God says, I'm calling a day that you should have a fasting. Why? That you might humble yourself before God. By the way, God, don't ever pray to God and say, God, please humble me. <laughs> he won't answer that prayer. God may humiliate you, but he will not humble you. You have to do the humbling. And the time must come in your life where you say to God, you say this to God, you say, God, I realize in fasting, as when you're fasting and you're praying, you're saying, God, I'm putting aside my food, I'm putting aside my recreation, I'm putting aside my business, I'm putting aside my ministry. There's a day when preaching should stop. There's a day when soul winning should stop. There's a day when music should stop. There's a day when, God, I'm going to seek you. I want you. You are important in my life. And I'm putting aside everything else because this is the day I've chosen to seek your face. And when you fast, you're telling God, you're saying, God, everything that I am is because of you. I am absolutely nothing. Everything I've been given is because of you, God. God, I confess in my life that sometimes I've become a little proud and I've become happy and arrogant. God, I confess. And that's what you're doing when you're fasting. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, that if we humble ourselves before a mighty God, that in due course He will exalt us. You might think, well, God's taken me to the maximum He's ever could take me to. No, my friend, He can bring you down to the minimum you can ever be. You better be careful. You better be careful that you're giving all the glory to God. That's what He says. The Bible says God is opposed to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. And so when you fast or you pray, but I like fasting too. That's kind of so beautiful. When that little hunger comes in, that's okay. Let's say, God, I remember what you've done in my life. I've got a little too comfortable. And I want to keep a day to fast with you. And sometimes, you know what, guys? You can, you can fast for a day. You can fast partially. John Wesley used to fast from morning to tea time. And he did it twice a week. Some people may be led to fast for two days. Some people are good fasters. They can, pray, they can fast and pray longer. Drink water, skip food, but most important, keep a day where you spend time. Daniel prayed three times to the Lord. You could be at work on Thursday nights. You say, that's the day I'm going to keep to seek God's face. And I'm going to, I'm going to three times in my workplace, I'm going to spend time alone with God. And I'm going to do that as a habit. I'm going to have a list of all the things that in my life need difficult moving and Removing and I, Lord, I want to seek your spiritual guidance. I have your Bible there. I have a little notepad and pencil, and then write down what God is saying to you. And that's what He says. That's what I want you to do. I want you to humble yourself and put me first in your life. The second reason for fasting is also found in, in Isaiah 58. See, the whole chapter is around Isaiah 58. But before that, let me tell you, it's to remove difficult situations from your life difficult situations. Have you had difficult situations? I think everybody has at different times. Stubborn situations? Yes. And the verse that I want to talk about is 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 30. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 30. When you go home you can read the story. There's a king of Judah called Jehoshaphat. He's a godly king. There's a day that comes when Jehoshaphat is going to be attacked by an enemy army. Two armies, in fact. Jehoshaphat knows that he doesn't have the strength and resources to fight these two armies. And he realizes that soon Israel, Judah and Israel will be taken over. So he does the one thing he, that we should do when we're in trouble, big trouble. He proclaims a fast across the whole of Judah. And as they call upon the Lord and fast, God gives them, through a prophet, a unique strategy. God tells them, Joseph, at number one, I want you to remember, since you've turned to me, the battle is no longer yours. The battle is mine. 
The second thing God tells them, a unique strategy. He says, listen, I'm going to have a unique strategy. Don't think every time we use the same strategy, but this is, the, this is the strategy. I want the army to go out, but before the army goes out, I want you to put the Levites and the singers ahead of the army. They will go out, five, six, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand of them, and they will be singing before the army. And so he organizes, I like it, a praise march. And the praise march goes before the army, and they're out there singing and praising, and you know what, Jehel, Jehel is, is leading them, and there they are, and they don't have to fight anything. God supernaturally makes the two enemies fight among themselves. They self-destruct and the armies are vanquished. And the amazing thing about it is for years to come, no enemy army would attack Jehoshaphat. There was a time in Mark chapter 9, verse 29, that Jesus, his disciples came to Jesus and said, why were we not able to cast the demon out of that child? Jesus said, this kind goes out only by prayer and fasting. 